Starting the coffee with the flaming chopsticks of truth using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee. <sighs> At the molecular level. Good morning, welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, Starbucks black coffee in the Rise and Shine coffee mug. <sighs> Excellent. Think about this. One year from now, you're going to look back on the U right now. How will the U one year from now describe the U now? Pretty interesting, right? But here's the trippy thing about it is that you have control over that. You have control how you will talk about yourself one year from now. Pretty wild, isn't it? You have control over that. How do you have control over that? By doing something with yourself now. Listening to the right people. Acting on what you hear. Creating goals and breaking them down into little steps. The top 3% of achievers in the world, across the board, are goal-oriented people and break things down laser focused every single day the power of focus think about the power of focus what is focus let's just actually take a look at what focus means the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition wow sounds like a clear detailed vision Right? Remember when I taught about that? Having a clear, detailed vision of what you want your future to look like. I had no idea it was going to say that. I knew it was something like that. I had no idea that those words were going to be used in defining the word focus. You could have a four-hour workday. Think about this. If you work from 6 in the morning to 10 a.m., let's say you get up at 4 o'clock, and the first hour is yours. That's what I teach everybody. The first hour of the day, you have to give to you. Read what you want to read. Pray what you want to pray. Do a walk. Better yet, walk and pray. How's that sound? Have a bite to eat, a cup of coffee. I'm going to have another sip. But what if for four hours you did nothing but focus on one thing? Every email, every keystroke, every phone call, everything you did was in the direction of your goal. Do you realize how far you'd be right now if you did that? Any idea. The whole problem of multitasking is this. It's false. You can't do it. The whole, you know, like the, the task bar at the bottom of your computer screen, you can open up multiple screens. Or at the top, tabs. Let's see, what do I have? I have my email. I have Gab. I just have a separate... Google tab that I just looked up the word focus. I have YouTube, Amazon, and Craigslist. <laughs> kind of ADD, right? Now, our lives are very much like that. We have all these things going on. We're doing a little bit of everything, but a lot of nothing. What if you, quote unquote, closed the tabs and only had one tab open in your life. I'm not talking about on your PC. In your life. What if you worked on one thing today? One thing this week? What if your goal this week was to take your bike out of the garage, wash it, clean it, lubricate the heck out of it, tighten things up, adjust the brakes, adjust the gears, 
treat the leather seat. Put new batteries in the halogen light or the LED light. Filled up the tires to proper pressure. What if that was your goal this week? Now you got to start small. You're saying, gosh, is that all you're going to do in a week? Let's start small. What if your goal is to clean a room? How about you start with a corner of the room? How about you start with the passenger side of your car? Do you see what I'm getting at? Start small. And do a little bit every single day. Every day. Focus. What could you get done if you focused? Put your answer down below. I'd love to hear that. Even statues look better with a beard. <laughs> I love this picture. I don't know how they did that. Some Photoshop aficionado took the beard off of a statue. I think it's pretty funny. Even statues look better with a beard. Do you have any favorite followers? Do you have any people that follow you on social media? Or people that you go back and forth with? This is a challenge for you this week. Message them. Initiate a phone conversation. Talk about life. Go from virtual to real. I do it a couple times a week. And the reason is it keeps you human. And if you dare, maybe meet them for coffee or a beer. Nine times out of ten, you won't regret it. I challenge you to do that. Reach out to somebody who follows you or who you follow. And then report back to me how that turned out. Probably the two most important things in your life are hard deadlines and accountability. Do you have hard deadlines for your, let's say, for your fitness levels, for your weight, for losing your gut, for cleaning your car, cleaning your house, getting your bike out of the garage, making a commitment to having a fitness corner where you have a couple dumbbells, a kettlebell, your bands, maybe a weight bench. Hard deadlines and accountability are going to get you from point A to point B. It's so funny when I look at pictures of people from two years ago and how they've changed. And I'm not talking about getting older. I'm talking about getting fatter. The past two years have really sucked for most of the world. The past two years has taken a toll on the world. Have you let it take a toll on you? What is normal now that wasn't normal two years ago in your life? What do you believe to be true now that you didn't believe to be true two years ago? Do you realize you just made it through possibly, well, I'm not going to say possibly, I'm going to say it was the single biggest hoax that the world has ever seen apart from Obama being elected president. You just lived through one of the biggest hoaxes ever. You watched it with your own eyes. You experienced it. Your community experienced it. So what I'd like to do is pat you on the back and say congratulations, you made it. If you are still watching this channel and you have a nice healthy skepticism, if you kept your eye on the prize, on your goals, if you didn't get fat, if you continue to build your mind, read, stay healthy, 
get good sleep, you pass the test. I don't know who gave the test, but we have been tested. Let's get real about that. The past two years were a big shit test. And you made it. And a lot of people didn't. And I'm not talking about living and surviving, like literally existing. I'm talking about mentally. Where did you cave in? Where did you fall for the... Where did you take the bait? You know, there was a time when I thought that homeschooling was crazy. There were times when I worked with young people and I could always tell the ones who were homeschooled. They didn't seem to have the social skills, the, I don't know what, how I would describe it, let me think. They just stood out. They didn't conform. But that was my problem. Some people say, and I was one of them, your kids won't fit in with society if you homeschool them. Now I'm saying, yes, that is the point. I don't want my children fitting in in society. But that's the point exactly. The education system in the Western world, in America, has turned into indoctrination that starts with the moment you vaccinate children, the moment you turn on a TV and sit a kid in front of it, clockwork orange style, send them to school, send them to college for four years, prolong the adolescence and uselessness of that child, creating a human being that doesn't become an adult until they are in their late 20s. Yes, Western civilization is on the decline, and it's our fault. If it's going to improve, it's going to be our fault. It's going to be our responsibility. What's happening is entropy. Entropy means things eventually slow down. You're like spinning tops. They eventually start wobbling, and then they stop. Things that are red hot and glowing eventually cool off. Entropy is nature's way of slowing things down, cooling things off. And the same thing can happen with you. Do you ever look at somebody and say, my God, what? I've done this. I have done this where I've said, what fountain of youth are you drinking from? People that seem timeless and ageless. I don't believe that we are meant to fizzle out. I believe that we are meant to live long and then, as Dr. Weil once said, rapidly succumb to the onset of age-related conditions. That's a fancy way of saying live till you die. We're not meant to fizzle out. You're not meant to take a handful of medications every day for the last 20 years of your life and then have a really shitty last few years. We're not meant for that, and we can do something about it starting now. Movement, drinking water, getting sleep, doing some weight training, because we're sitting in offices. We're not active. We're not challenging our bodies or our minds. Anxiety and doubt flee when you purposely work towards a goal. Goals don't happen by accident. Just drifting in the sea of life, hoping that you'll eventually wash upon the shore of success is a recipe for disaster and regret. How do I know that? When I work with people, do coaching and consulting with people, their faces always change when they talk about regrets. Always. Always. 10 out of 10 times, their faces change when they talk about the weight that they tried to lose, when they talked about the degree that they were going to get, 
when they talk about wanting to be married and have kids when they were younger, but that just didn't work out, or that wasn't in the cards for me. There's so much more within your control than you think, or that you've been programmed to believe. And I'm not giving you any psychobabble here. This is a fact. It is never, ever too late to do any of those things, to lose weight, to get into shape, to accomplish something, to become wealthy. It's never too late. You ever hear people say, well, I'm on a fixed income. I love that. As I approach 62 years old, in my seventh decade now, and I'm eligible to start receiving Social Security at the end of this year, being on a fixed income. And from what I understand, you can only make a certain amount. You can only earn a certain amount when once you start collecting Social Security. Otherwise, they reduce the amount that you get. Like, what the hell? It's almost as if that they are... urging you to remain broke, poor. I'm on a fixed income. It's almost as if you've convinced yourself that the weight that you are at, the way your body looks, I'm at a fixed weight. I'm at a fixed health level, and you do nothing about it. And that you'll somehow be penalized for getting healthier. In the same way, a government will penalize you if you make too much. Have you actually heard people say that if I make, I can't make more than so much a year now that I'm on Social Security, now that I'm on a fixed income? Oh my God, to hell with that. You were not created to retire. You might retire from a job, but that does not mean retiring from life and being productive. And I'm not talking about having a hobby. I'm not talking about retiring from a job and then fishing or golfing. Or now I get to spend more time with my grandkids or something like that. You're not meant to do that. You're meant to be productive till the day you die. You're not meant to rest. You are meant to move and to produce and to create and to earn. Do not be pressured to give up at a certain age. No man ever built an impressively functional body by skipping workouts because he didn't feel like it. You've heard of emotional eating, right? Talk to a lot of people about emotional eating. Emotionally driven lack of body, fitness, and health care is a thing as well. This is where self-discipline comes in. Feelings can deceive you. I did a video many years ago. I think I had a big beard when I did this video. And I remember where I was. I think I was underneath a, the big pine tree in the backyard where I said, emotions are your enemy. That is when I started teaching to delay your emotions, not deny them. Feelings and emotions can deceive you in life, love, and health. Don't deny your emotions, just delay them. Even when I don't feel like walking, I never came back thinking, I should have stayed in bed, or I wish I didn't take that walk. My thought process always was, I'm glad I took a walk. For those of you that started the summer shred, there's probably only maybe 12 of you. Out of the 169,000 subscribers, there's probably 12 of you that are doing the summer shred, which means you're doing carnivore with me for 10 days. You're going to do some fasting with me. You're going to do some walking with me. You Let me tell you, you 12, you are not going to regret it. At the end of this, by July 1st of this year, you're not going to say, man, I wish I didn't do that. 
I wish I didn't do that carnivore stuff. I wish I didn't walk. I wish I didn't get those resistance bands and do the bands workouts. I wish I didn't lose weight. None of you are going to say that. Everyone's going to be, man, I'm glad I did it. And then some of you are going to say, shoot, I wish I did that. Can you start another program, a three-month program for me? And then it's July, August, September. So then we'll say by October 1st, we're going to call that the fall shred. And then you're going to have October, November, December, another three months. And there'll be 12 people who join. So by the end of 2022, there's probably going to be maybe 25 or 30 people that worked with me through this, that got inspired. There's only a handful of you now that are just watching and observing, overanalyzing everything. Are you sure that carnivore stuff I read about that doesn't really work? It's bad for gout and your, and your, and your liver. And you really need to do this or do that. Shut the f up, please. Shut up. You're overanalyzing everything. Guess what? The people who already started are already better off than you. They're already lower in weight. They're already sleeping better. They're already in a mental mindset. I can't wait for the next three months. I'm thinking about what the next three months is going to be after July 1st. I'm already thinking that. The summer shred has to do with losing weight and getting your body into shape. I'm not talking about bodybuilding. I'm not talking about powerlifting. I'm talking about dropping a couple inches, dropping 10 to 20 pounds, which is going to affect everything in your life. Couldn't you benefit from some weight loss? Less weight, less inches around your waist? You're going to walk better. Your posture is going to be better. You're going to have better sex if you're married. Going back to what I said, no man ever built an impressively functional body by skipping workouts because they didn't feel like it. Enough of your feelings. You know how you fast and do a cleanse for physical health? How about a fast and a cleanse from controlling people or assholes? their opinions and their approval or disapproval cycle in your life. You will never achieve what you can be if you are pulled in any direction except the one that you determine. Do what you want to do. There are people now that I haven't talked to in a year. One year. Because one year ago I made a decision to eliminate certain people from my life. And my life has gotten better. Who do you need to eliminate in your life to improve your life? Who is it? You already know. I am now one year into eliminating having a fast from a-holes. In the same way that you might fast from food. You can't have intermittent fasting with jerks. Like, I'm only going to be around a jerk for six hours a day. I'm going to do an 18-6. 18, 18 hours without them, six hours with them. You have to do a complete fast. There's no such thing as intermittent fasting from assholes. You actually need to eliminate them. What keeps people like that in your life? Why can't you cut ties? Guilt? Over what? It's time you do the fast and eliminate. Knowing many, loving none, bearing sorrow, having fun. But back home, he'll always run to sweet Melissa. From the Allman Brothers, 1967. What is your favorite Allman Brothers song? When I... Listen to that song, Melissa, by the Allman Brothers. I'll tell you what, the, the guitar in that, how it, it almost, it's almost a crying guitar. 
Alan Jackson that talked about the crying of a steel guitar. There's kind of a crying guitar in Song Melissa that I think you would like. For about one year, every day, I listened to the Allman Brothers Pandora channel, and it played just about every Allman Brothers song every single day. And I really, really learned to love them and their music. I've done the same thing with Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, trying to think of the playlists that I have on Pandora, the stations that I created. What stations have you created and what playlists have you created that you love right now? Share it with me down below. So it's now Monday morning. We started fasting on Thursday. We did, a, in other words, a carnivore lifestyle or a carnivore eating style. Whether you are doing just strict carnivore or mostly meat, mostly animal products. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today is five of that. You are five days into your summer shred now. Eat only meat, eggs, organ meat, water, black coffee. You can treat yourself with a little cream in the coffee. If you want a little honey, go for it. I'm all about having a little bit of grace with yourself when you're going through this stuff. Get creative with your cooking methods and seasoning. Make a chart that records your weight, your blood pressure. Keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate everything. Don't overanalyze everything. Eat only when you're hungry. Call your meals meal number one and meal number two. Eat as much as you want on the carnivore eating style. There's no rules that apply except to eat animal products. Have at least two to four bottles of water a day. Do your workouts. Do chest, shoulders, tries, and then legs, back, and buys. Do payoff ab exercises daily. I taught you how to do them last week. If you're not going to lift weights, at least do the payoff presses with a band. And we'll talk about all that on the next Daybreak Show. Your home of sanity, clarity, and reason. Now go finish your coffee.